Hi, I'm Roger Montgomery from the Montgomery Fund and welcome to this week's video insight. Well, if the United Nations is to be believed, we're heading for a global food calamity. The United Nations has warned that globally, food stocks and reserves are so low that severe weather will deplete them completely and the result will be much higher food prices which will particularly affect the poor around the world. If you believe the Earth Policy Institute, they also believe that the weather is now sufficiently unpredictable and unreliable that globally there is nothing for it but to accumulate vast tracts of cheap land. And Oxfam warned last year that the prices of key staples including wheat and rice could double in the next 20 years and this is on the back of a doubling in the last 10 years. So what should we do about this food crisis as Australian investors? Is there anything that we can do to take advantage of the boom in food prices and in uh, the boom in the price of arable land? Well, unfortunately, the short answer is probably not. In Australia, we don't have a sufficient number of listed opportunities. And if anything, if we look at the producers in Australia and we compare them to the retailers of food, we find that the market power is definitely in favour of the retailers in this country. I'm just having a look now at a list of producers, wholesalers and retailers. And what I've found is quite interesting and in fact stunning uh, in its contrast. Producers like Goodman Fielder, Australian Vintage, uh, Ridley Corporation, Gage Roads Brewing, Fe uh, Freedom Foods Group, Select Harvests, uh, and uh, Warnable Cheese and Butter and Bega produce returns on equity of, so in some cases, much less than 10%. But when you look at the retailers like Woolworths and West Farmers, uh, Retail Food Group and Metcash, what you find is the return on equity is in the high double digits and in some cases even more than 20%. If you also take a look at the market capitalizations of these companies, what you discover is that the weight, uh, the size of the businesses that are in retailing are significantly greater than the size of the listed businesses involved in food production. So what that suggests to me is that we have a fragmented food production industry and a concentrated food retailing industry. This is not good for our producers. But it also means that investors, we can't really take advantage of the global food crisis that the United Nations and others are talking about. I look forward to seeing you again next week. And in the meantime, be sure to follow us on Facebook and Twitter.